So let's have an honest conversation, shall we? For real. Let's 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 have a talk. Cause it's been a weird couple of days. I haven't been doing videos because I honestly haven't felt like coming and turning this motherfucker on. Let's be real. So, let's get started. Uh, on New Year's Eve, I woke up in pain. I wasn't sure where it was coming from. I, I described it as somebody jumping off a porch and stomping on my nuts repeatedly for hours. It was it was a pain that set a standard for me because I, I think I got a pretty good handle on my pain threshold like I can take enough like who I mean who wants to be hurt really but like I can deal with it but this was a new level of hurt this was it was awful it went from no baby I'm fine to hey let me call you back cuz I'm calling 911 real quick and I ended up going into the hospital and I told Asia not to take the day off but once she realized I was going to the hospital, all bets were off. I couldn't have stopped her if I wanted to. So I go to the hospital. Long story short, kidney stone. Don't know how, don't know where I got it. I like, got it. It's, it comes from diet or whatever. But I'm 44 years old. Like, I haven't eaten anything differently recently, so I don't know how this would work. You know? But I got a kidney stone. Kari actually had one. Maybe it was last year. It might have been two years ago. But this was a new level of pain. Like, when I tell you this was, this was the worst pain I'd ever experienced, and I learned something about myself while I was in the hospital. I've always known that, for me... Humor was a defense mechanism, you know? I hid behind humor when I was hurting or scared or mad or angry. Anything, really. Anything I didn't want to deal with directly, humor would come into play. Because it's my thing. It's my go-to. And I was in a hospital. Uh, Asia and I have this scale where we say, how do you feel from 1 to 10? It's the same one they use in the hospitals. And it's like 1, it's like, oh, you're fine. And 10, it's like, oh my God, you're in trouble. And I have never told my wife I was at a 10. In the history of our marriage, I have never said 10 because 10 is, I think I'm dying. What the fuck, you know? Like, it's just, you reserve 10 for a big deal. I was like at a 13. I'm laying there and I'm in pain and it's either lay there and cry like a bitch or make jokes. And I chose to make jokes and I was cracking doctors up like we for what it was, I felt like we had a good time when we, when while we were there, but I learned something about myself very important. See, I've always told myself that when I die, like on my way out, I want to have some sarcastic shit to say. I want to say something snarky on the way out for no reason. Just not assholish, not dickish, just just snarky. You know, and I was always, that's always been like my thought. That's what I wanted to do, but it was like, I don't know when the time comes when you're hurting, when you're really, really hurting, will you have the presence of mind to do that? And yesterday showed me that I would. Yesterday showed me that even when I was dealing with what I thought was the most intolerable pain I've ever fucking experienced, I was still me. That's cool. That's what's up. That gives me that gives me hope. Like sincerest wish on my way out, something snarky. For real. I can't even tell you what it is, to be honest. Like I don't know. But in the moment, it will be in context to whatever's happening. That's very important to me. I vape. Now, that aside, I've got plenty of drugs now, and I've got my own 
so I'm taking very good care of myself. I also hurt my wrist. I don't know how, but it's very sore. I pulled like a tendon or something. Like it's really sore. But mm, yeah, my finger is. But I'm on plenty of drugs, and I've got the brace to hold it in place, so I'm not flopping all about while it's healing up. I feel like in a couple of days it'll be fine. But what I wanted, what I really want to discuss with you, I need to pull that calendar down. Not only is it not August, it's not 2019. Damn, live it in the past. Um, my sister recently caught up with my mom's ex-husband. His name is Arvo Livingston. I'm not going to make any bones about it. Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy a lot. Cheated on my mother in her bed. In her home. Took money from my mother. And spent it on this woman. And was like. Expected us to not notice. Or not care. Or think that bygones would be bygones. No. Fuck that dude. Fuck him a lot. So when my sister said. That she had heard from the woman. He had cheated on my mother for. My line of thing was like, what the fuck for? What what would you have to say? And she was like, yeah, Arvo would really like to talk to you guys. And I was just like, I don't give a fuck. No. But Trina is that kind of person. So Trina, Trina talked to him. And apparently he's had a couple of strokes. And my, mentally, he's all fucked up. Like she was telling me that if you said more than three or four words to him at once, he couldn't comprehend them. And then there's these long pauses, and he just kind of says the same five or six action phrases over and over because his brain can't hold on to anything for longer than that. So she would say, hey, Arvo, how are you? And he would go, not even exaggerating, just, hey. And she go, hey, it's me. And after a long while, it's good to hear your voice. And then she would try to say something more than five sentences. And he would go, oh, that's nice. Because he didn't understand. It's like something in his mind ain't fucking working right. And like when she told me she was going to reach out and talk to this dude, it was like, well, he don't want to hear none of the shit I got to say. Like, for real. Like. You fucked over my mom, dude. Like, that's fucked up. Like, who, you don't do that. That's... But but I digress. So now here's this guy who will never be able to enjoy music ever again. Because anything past the first three or four words or the melody, he loses it. And it's like he's hearing it all over again. It's like 50 first dates, but every 10 seconds. Like, it's fucked up. It's fucked up. It's no way to live. It's not only would you just be living those 10 seconds forever, you wouldn't even know it was any other way because a long-term memory of how things would be just don't, it's not in there. It, it just, it wouldn't even equate to you. It's just 10 seconds. Like, imagine if you will. You snap into what you feel like is existence. And you look around and you're confused as fuck for the first four seconds. And somebody has said a thing to you. And at the time it takes them to say it and your mind to process that thought, you lose it. And you wake up and go, oh, this is all very confusing. And they try to tell you another thing. So rather than not say anything, you go, oh, that's nice. Because his mind can't hold on to anything. And she told me that. And I was like, wow. You know, as a writer, like, as somebody who enjoys music and loves story and continuity is so important to me. And I, knowing how a story ends or furthering a story, like, that's so important to me. And to know that I would only be able to read the first line of a book forever. Like, that's awful. It's just awful. But it couldn't have happened to a nicer dude. Fuck him. Fuck him. He did that shit. 
he did that shit. That's years of cocaine catching up with you and all the other shitty decisions you made. Then you had a stroke and you tried to get past it. He might have been a better person. He might have been trying to work it out. But you still did all them drugs. You still did my mama shady. You still got all these consequences you had to deal with. So when you had a stroke... You lost everything. So now he, he barely know who he fucking is, much less what's going on. And you know what? Couldn't have happened to a nicer chap. Fuck him. Fuck him a lot. Like, no, I don't have nothing to say to him because he wouldn't remember it no way. Why would it even matter? I It's not like I need to get it off my chest. I'm long since over it. I'm long since past him. But it's like... I am now more moved by the for 75 cents a day you can sponsor a child commercials than I was with the story about this dude. Fuck this dude. Fuck him a lot. And if that makes me a bad person, I accept that. Because that's just, that's karma. That's karma caught up with you. Karma did a full 360 on your ass and was like, remember that time you fucked over that real nice family that took you in? Like, helped you get off drugs, cleaned you up, got you a job, made you part of the family, made you important, made you special. Like, look at you. You part of the team. Like, I let him watch my son. Like, this was like, Arvel was the man, dog. He was cool as fuck. Till some pussy got in the way. You did that to yourself. Absolutely. I didn't make you stick your dick in somebody else. I didn't make you... Tie that fucking thing around your arm and do the needle. I didn't make you cook shit on a spoon. I don't know how drugs do. I just It's all fucking stereotypical shit I've seen on TV. I don't know how to drug. I know how to drug, but I don't know how to drug, you know? So, fucking. He did that shit. Lie in your bed. You want me to feel sorry for the bed that you lying in? Absolutely not. Don't nobody feel sorry for me for the bed that I'm lying in. It just so happens that mine is a fucking California king and I lay next to my woman every night. I'm happy to lie in the bed that I made. Like, that's that's important to me. Like, I stick to my decisions, good or bad, right or wrong. If I did it, I did it. I can own that shit. And I can take it with me. These are the consequences of your actions, Mr. Livingston. Learn to live with that shit. Like, what bothers me the most about it is that I don't think he'll ever learn his lesson, you know? Like, I think his mind is so mentally so far gone that he'll never understand that this is torture for him. But you know what? Take what I can get. Am I a bitter person? Maybe. Maybe, but there are very few people in my life that I hold such contempt for. One would be Arvel Livingston. The second is Patricia Harris. That bitch know what she did. And the third is Michael Jordan. Not the basketball player. And not and not Asia's little brother. So don't worry. But I can't think of no other people in my life that I just hold such a disdain for. Just such a, a step below hatred. Because hatred for me would signal that you like reside somewhere in my innermost thoughts and that's not the case when I say that I have contempt for these people it's more in the sense of you ever have somebody offer you like at the dinner table it's like hey have you ever tried squid chitlins or like some disgusting shit and you hear that and it's just like Ugh, you frown up instantly at the sound of Ugh, that sound fucked up like, you don't hate squid chitlins. You just don't fuck with them. Like, why would you ever? That's where I am. When I hear one of those names, I just go, ugh. Because I don't want nothing to fucking do with you. And I move on with my day. Because I'm better than that shit. But I'm going to go. I'm going to go enjoy my afternoon. I just really wanted to get that off my chest. And happy fucking new year. For those of you who are along for the ride, it's interesting. It's interesting when I come here and I see it's got like four views. It's like, holy shit, three other people cared. That's fucking cool. I'm not interested in being YouTube famous or something. You know, I was watching the thing the other day. What was that? They were talking about YouTube people and... How they put their best foot forward and it's not their life. It's like this is not real life. This does not reflect how people are. This is a business. And it's like, and that's true. I would suppose. But 
You see, you don't get that when you come here. You get you get the value of like for camera quality, me holding up my camera phone. I'm not buying fucking equipment. I'm not hiring a team. I don't even have good lighting. Shit, this shit is uneven as fuck. You know, you won't even get a, a decent schedule out of me. Like, it's supposed to be. It started, I was supposed to do at least two minutes a day every day. But that's just, it's not out the window. It's just sometimes it ain't nothing to fucking say. So I don't. But what you will get is fucking honesty. Honesty. And that's, this re, This is fucking reality. This is, I'm, I'm at home on a Wednesday afternoon, the day before my son's 23rd birthday. God fucking damn. I got a kidney stone somewhere in my penis. My wrist is fucked up. But I'm chilling. Like, this is... It's as real as it fucking get for y'all. Sorry, like, sometimes reality ain't the most entertaining. But this is for me. You know, like, I want to be able to look back at these and go, that's where I was a year ago. I'm either better, I need to make some changes, or, eh, okay, I can see that. Like, because it's important to me to have this. So I know, this this was me. This was my life. Like, there's nothing. Oh, man, my grandkids are going to love it. Oh, my God, if you guys are watching, what's up, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? Grandpa used to be cool as hell. Like, I hope I'm still cool. I hope I'm still like the snarky, old, sarcastic grandpappy. I'm a pappy, by the way. I want to be grandpappy. Like, just say, tell us a story, Grandpappy. Let, let Grandpappy tell you the story about once upon a time when he was a Power Ranger. And they go, oh, Poppy, that's not a real thing. Let Poppy tell you how he was the Phantom, all right. Let me read you a story. It's, oh, my God, I'm going to be the cool-ass Grandpappy. You'll see. You'll see. But I digress. This has gone on for far too long. I'm going to go see what my boy said because he sent me a message a long time ago. So... I'm going to go. I'm going to do that. Y'all enjoy y'all day. Oh, I should push the...